Hello students, welcome to the lesson 4 of the chapter 3 from the subject Advanced Structural Analysis. So in this lesson, let us solve the third problem of development of stiffness matrix. So the problem given to us is like this. So there are two coordinates and two hinges like this. So I call this a hinge as A and this hinge as B. Now we have to develop the stiffness matrix for this. Since there are two coordinates, we can assume that there are two degrees of redundancy. Okay. So your size of the stiffness, size of the flexibility matrix will be of the order 2 into 2. So whatever is the number of coordinates, that will be the size of the flexibility matrix. So this will be F11, F12, F13. To 1 and F to 2. This is the simplest of the problems. Now we have to first do what? We have to get the elements of first column. So, what we have to do? We have to apply unit force in the direction of first coordinate and in the direction of second coordinate, the unit force will be equal to 0. That means what? We call this as F1, we call this as F2. In the direction of F1, we have to apply the unit force. That's nothing but the rotation there. So if this is your beam, right, and you are applying a unit moment in the direction of your coordinate 1. Right, now because of this, how will your beam deflect? Your beam will deflect in this way. Okay, so in this case, what will happen, you know, this is your near end where you are applying your unit force. And this is your far end. Now, since you are applying the rotation at the supports, the values the standard values here what you have are here it will be at the near end it will, it will be l by 3 e i and at the far end it will be l by 6 e i okay that is half of this value right now the important thing is the direction now whenever you want to do this you have to put the directions like this, see from the horizontal to the deflected shape, from the horizontal to the deflected shape. Okay, now if you want to write the elements, stiffness element, uh, flexibility elements, what are those? F11 and F21. What is the meaning of this? You are applying unit force in the direction of first coordinate and trying to see what are the displacements in the first and second coordinate. So in the first coordinate, see this is your clockwise, the first coordinate is clockwise. So here also you are displacement is happening in clockwise direction so it will be plus L by 3 E I coming to your second coordinate this is clockwise here whereas your displacement is happening in anti-clockwise direction so it will be minus L by 6 E I okay so these are the standard values which you have to remember suppose it was a cantilever beam uh, I mean suppose uh, your movement was applied uh, at the free end what would happen so it would deflect like this, right? In this case, the displacement would be how much? L square by 2e i, and uh, the rotation will be how much? L by e i. Hope you remember this is solved in problem number one and two. Okay. So this is here there is no support, but here in this case there is support. So it will come like this. Now coming to the so I will just, just for your reference, I told you, okay, so next what we have to do is to get the elements of second column. What we have to do, unit displacement, unit force should be applied in the second coordinate okay and the first coordinate should be equal to zero so what will happen in that case if this is your beam 
right you are applying unit coordinate unit force in the direction of your first coordinate like this this we are applying equal to unity so how will it how will it in this shape so this will move up okay so now you are applying your moment unit force right so this is your near end here this is your far end so at near end it is always l by 3 e i and at the far end it is l by 6 e i now for the direction what you should do from the um, from the horizontal to the deflected shape so this will be your directions now you write the flexibility elements so f1 to and f2 to so f1 to is in first coordinate this is clockwise whereas this is going anti clockwise so it's minus l by 6 e i coming to this here this is clockwise and here this is also going clockwise so it will be l by 3 e i if you want to write the final matrix what will happen l by 3 e i minus l by 6 e i here what will it be minus l by 6 e i and l by 3 e i okay so take l by 3 e i common so what will you have one here you will have minus 0.5 Minus zero point five and one. Okay. Or what you can do is take six total again from here. Take two common. Okay. In the denominator, so this will become six. So this will become two minus one and minus one two. So basically, I have taken here. I I have taken just three common. What did I do here? I took six common here. Okay. That's why we got like this. Why I took it is this is the standard formula we'll be using when we are solving problems.